So I realized that perhaps I should do a little introduction to what the Whole30 is. Now I'm thinking a lot of people who are looking for information on it are already familiar with the tenants, but just in case, here are some of the rules around Whole30. No dairy, no alcohol, no sugar, no corn, no soy, well no artificial, no gluten, no grains of any kind, so no rice, no quinoa, no, nothing like that, no flour of any kind. Also, you can't have any legumes, so no beans, no peanuts. Certain vegetables are off limits, no corn, no soy of any kind, no peas. Also, no chemicals or artificial flavors of any kind, no sulfates, no sugar including natural sugars, but that's a little wonky because of course you can have an apple which is full of natural sugar, but you cannot use honey which is also a natural sugar. So any tea that has stevia in it is off limits, any maple, anything with honey included at all is off limits during the Whole30. The only sugars that you're having are sugar that you would get from eating produce. One of the most interesting parts of the Whole30 is that there is no faking so you're not supposed to use Whole30 compliant ingredients to make foods, fake foods that you would normally like. So for example you cannot use Whole30 compliant ingredients to make a mock gluten-free cake for example because part of the process is to start recognizing when you're having certain food cravings and why and to break the habit of them. Your brain doesn't really know the difference between having a Whole30 compliant cake or a regular piece of chocolate cake. Either way, you're rewarding yourself with some sort of sugar or you are feeding your frustration or depression with a particular item. So one of the things you're supposed to do is start thinking about why you're eating what you're eating and when you're triggered to eat certain foods. Mostly meat or fish, vegetables, and supplemented with some fruit and nuts. For 30 days you eat completely clean. The point is to reintroduce these things one at a time later to see how they affect your body. That is by no means an exhaustive list of what is necessary and absolutely no reasoning behind why Whole30 is what it is. The book has all of the information, chapters and chapters worth, and it explains what each of these foods does to your stomach and to the bacteria in your gut and what's inflammatory and what's difficult to digest and what can cause food sensitivities in a lot of people. So. If you're interested in reading more about the reasons why these particular items are not compliant with the Whole30 um, reset, then I strongly recommend you pick up the book, but this is just meant to be a quick rundown of what you can and cannot do while you're on the program. Tell me about your Whole30 below, and uh, give me a like and subscribe if you want to hear how it goes throughout the entire experience.